Good morning and welcome to the Murray Fowler Veterinary Hospital at the Sacramento Zoo. I'm Sean Brady, I'm one of the veterinarians. This morning you will be joining us for an exam on our 21 year old Spurthite tortoise, Bubba. Bubba is about 100 pounds and we'll be receiving his annual examination that includes physical exam, blood work, and radiographs. The exam is going to be led by veterinarian Rachel Ferris, who is a first year zoological medicine resident here at the Sacramento Zoo and UC Davis. And she will spend the whole year with us before going down to San Diego to finish up her training. Dr. Ferris is going to be assisted by two veterinary technicians, Allison Mott and Cheyenne Miller. We will also have assistance from two fourth year veterinary students from UC Davis. And the Sacramento Zoo has a partnership with UC Davis uh, to train residents and fourth year veterinary students. And this gives them hands on experience in the zoo world. These students are usually interested in zoo, wildlife, or exotic animal medicine. About 15 or 20 minutes ago, we gave our tortoise Bubba some sedation to allow us to more easily work with him. Large tortoises are extremely strong and it can be really difficult to work with them if they are not willing to cooperate. So here comes Bubba into the exam room. The first thing we're gonna do is get his weight. So today Bubba weighs 45.2 kilograms and that's right around 100 pounds. Bubba's pretty sleepy after getting his drugs, his limbs, and his head are not being sucked back into his shell like an awake tortoise might do. And that just allows us to get a good look at all of this. And while we have Bubba here in the hospital, we are going to be monitoring his heart rate and respiratory rate to make sure he continues to do well with his sedation. Here you can see our ECG leads that let us monitor Bubba's heart rate. We also have a team here, which includes our other technician, Cheyenne, and student Robin, and they're recording all of those anesthetic parameters and monitoring for trends that let us know that Bubba's doing well. And this is the main treatment room here at the Murray Fowler Veterinary Hospital. This is where we do the most of our exams. So we have all of our equipment. We have an anesthesia machine, all the monitoring equipment, all of the necessary lights. We'll also be doing x-rays uh, in the room next door. And the team is working on getting a heart rate on Bubba. We use what's called a Doppler to just listen to the flow of blood through his vessels. So sultata tortoises are the third largest species of tortoise in the world. They're the largest that live on the mainland. The larger tortoises are the Galapagos and Aldabra tortoises that live on islands. And these guys uh, live in Africa. So Bubba's about a full size uh, adult sultata tortoise. He's about 100 pounds and exceptionally strong. Here you can see Jamie, one of our veterinary students, has an ophthalmoscope. 
She's going to check Bubba's eyes to make sure that they're clear. There's no signs of cataracts or any other age-related diseases. And then we always have one of our veterinarians double check our students. So that's what Dr. Ferris is doing now. Bubba's about 20 or 21 years old. How's it looking there, Dr. Ferris? Bubba's eyes look pretty good. Tortoises can live an exceptionally long time. At least sultados can live 70 to over 100 years old. So some people get them as pets when they're small and cute but don't realize how strong and large they get and how long they live and have to pass them on to other any problems, we'll follow up with any additional testing. <laughs> so Bubba is an herbivore, so he eats a lot of different um, vegetables and occasionally gets some fruits. He, at the zoo, we have some chow, a commercially made diet that is specially formulated for tortoises. We also get a lot of lettuces, hays, and grasses, and occasional fruit as a treat. And right now they're using a little oral speculum to keep his mouth open, just get a nice thorough look into his mouth. just had one small plaque in his mouth that's a little sore that he has sometimes caught and we think it's just from chewing on things that are pretty rough. Just checking Bubba's neck. It looks good there. Bubba 
Allison's been at the zoo for quite a while. Um, Allison, do you know how long Bubba's been here with us? Oh, I think Bubba has been with us for the majority of his life, too. Um, so yeah, and we think he's about 20, 21 years old, so I think that's about how long he's been. At least 14. At least 14 years, which is how long Allison's been here. Hello, Sarah. So what we're trying to do now is use that Doppler to get a nice listen to his heart rate. When tortoises have some sedation on board, the heart can be pretty slow. Um, and they're not like an MRI where we can use a stethoscope to listen to their heart because their shell gets in the way. So we're just trying to put that Doppler over a blood vessel where we can hear the, the whoosh of blood. So even though Bubba had to just get a good look at all his back legs, but he re he's still strong enough to, to really pull that leg in. Yeah, sorry, we're having a few Wi-Fi issues in the hospital here. The stream's having some difficulties. I don't have the strongest Wi-Fi signal in the hospital. Alright team, we got a question. What's the normal heart rate for a tortoise? Can any of our vet students answer that question? temperature, their size, and for Bubba, he might have a pretty slow heart rate with the drugs that he has on board and his, and his size. Yeah, when we were getting a really good ECG reading, it was right about 15 to 20. Yeah, so 15 to 20 for a, sed a sedated tortoise, that sounds doing Bubba's annual exam. All the animals here at the Sacramento Zoo get examined about once a year and that lets us just get our hands on them, check them from the tip of their nose to the end of their tail. We'll also be checking blood values and every other year for most of our animals we do x-rays to just see what's going on on the inside. So Bubba does have a history of some arthritis in his left elbow. So Dr. Ferris is just really trying to get a good feel of all his limbs, pull them out, palpate them, make sure she doesn't feel any signs of arthritis in the other legs or progression of arthritis in his left elbow. So Bubba's about 20, 21 years old. Yeah, he does have some historic pyramiding of his carapace there. Um, to ensure that that doesn't get any worse, we make sure we feed him an appropriate diet and have all of his husbandry parameters correct, make sure he gets the correct amount of sunlight and all of his nutrients. We do have Bubba sedated. He's such a large tortoise. He's so strong if he doesn't have any drugs on board that we're just not able to get a good look at him, feel his legs, look in his eyes or in his mouth. 
he had his sedatives given to him at about 8.45. It took about 15 minutes for them to set in, and that should give us about two hours of time to work on him. The lifespan of a sulcata tortoise is, is quite long. They're definitely over 70 years, some of them over 100. So on occasion when people get them as pets, they're passing them down to their children or their grandchildren. Anything abnormal on exam, Dr. Ferris? Not so far, aside from his kind of historic shell changes that I heard you talking about. So we're going to try and flip him up and get a look underneath him. Shell condition. Yeah, Bubba will continue to grow for his entire life. Uh, they usually grow faster in their, when they're younger, but they slowly continue to grow even as they age. Yes, Dr. Brady is just doing the, the video and narration today. Dr. Ferris is in charge of our exam, and I'm here to help with any questions that she might have. So we're just flipping him over to get a good look on his underside here. Make sure that this shell looks healthy. scanning for his microchip. All the animals here at the zoo do get a little identification microchip so that we can ensure we know exactly who it is for Bubba. He's pretty obvious for some of the other guys. We do have to scan that before we get him started. Bubba's so big that that microchip can sometimes look pretty deep in him and it's hard to pick up with our scanner. You can see that his plastron or the underside of his shell is concave and that's pretty common in our male tortoises in this species and for a lot of tortoise species actually but not all of them. So Bubba does have some conformational abnormalities on the bottom part of his shell and that will require a little bit of work from our veterinary team. We have to occasionally use a trim to trim that back. And that just allows so that when he defecates, it easily passes out and doesn't get caught in his shell. And that's a congenital abnormality in him. Yeah, during their annual exams for all of our animals, we do any necessary work um, for animals we will check their nails and their beak. I think we decided he looked pretty good today, but occasionally some of our animals here do require dremeling of their beaks or trimming of their nails. And there's just a little bit of flaking shell on the underside of his shell here. Bubba is quite heavy, requires the whole team to lift him up. He is about 100 pounds and very dense. I believe we have about three sulcas here at the zoo. The next step in our exam is to attempt to get a blood sample. Vet students, where do we like to get a blood sample in a tortoise? Okay. Um, right up here. But you can also go for a brachial vein, right? Which is kind of more yep. right here. Or under uh, Excellent. Or you can go for the tail. Um, for the jugular vein, like the most. Um, it's such a big guy with a long neck. having a few connection issues and trying to find a spot with good Wi-Fi.
continue to just monitor him with his sedation on board. We want to make sure that his heart rate and respiratory rate remain stable. And they have been so far. That heart rate's been about 15 to 20 beats per minute, which is normal for a tortoise this size with sedation on board. Do you want to? Yeah, do you want to just count the pulse? For those of you just joining us, they are attempting to get a blood sample from Bubba's jugular vein. And we like to explain. During their annual exam, it gives us a good signs of infection or changes in their liver or kidney values. It's really important for us to just monitor that. Uh, focused on trying to get a blood sample at the moment. It can be really challenging in our tortoises to get blood. Their neck has a lot of muscles and it, uh, it can be hard to determine exactly where that vessel is. The other problem we have to deal with is they have really loose skin around their neck. first attempt didn't get the blood we wanted so we'll try again on the other side. We will keep the blood vessels by trying to hold off on the neck and see, it, see them fill up. We're always trying to poke a vein so if we gently hold off an area we can see that vein fill up with blood and just like you kind of see on your arm or when you go get your blood taken the nurses are looking for, for a little elevation, sometimes a little bit of a change in color on the skin of what that vessel is. So this is some of our monitoring equipment. We are always kind of trying to keep an eye on our heart rate, respiratory rate, for a number of species, blood pressure. All these things are much harder to get in a tortoise. Their shells, while protecting them from predators, also protect them from some of the monitor equipment we like to place on them. Yeah, shells can get injured and they can also be repaired. Anesthesia team, how is our patient doing? Team anesthesia? He's doing well. We're just checking right now the depth of anesthesia that he is under, the amount of sedation he has, by moving his legs and stuff and see if he pulls up much, by checking his eye and by tapping it, seeing if he closes it or moves it at all. That allows us to see how sedated. Getting a TPR on a tortoise can be really challenging. So a TPR stands for temperature, pulse, and respiratory rate. And their temperature really varies a lot with the ambient temperature, so the temperature outside, the temperature in the environment they're in. 
and it's less of an indicator in them than in our mammal species. Their heart rate is also really challenging to get, and we have to use a Doppler and, and find a vessel to place it over, and then their respiratory rate, we are able to see that one a little bit more easily. We can watch, watch for just movements with each breath. The squirt ball that you see is alcohol. We put it over the ECG leads, and that just helps conduct the signal that we're trying to detect um, to monitor the heart rate. So they've tried to get blood from both jugular veins, the right and the left. We like to let our students get an opportunity to try this as a year from now they will be practicing veterinarians and we won't have as much help. So we are also going to try the next location which is called the brachial vein. It's kind of a vein that lives behind their elbow and you can see Dr. Ferris showing our vet student Jamie the landmarks for that. Kate Gore, our formal reptile keeper, is stopping by to say hi. A special hello hey, to hey, Allison hey. and Cheyenne. Yeah, she wants Bubba to get some scratches. Just for you. Hi, Kate. Um, we are in the first drawer there are the needles. Dr. Ferris, we have the folks asking what gauge needle you're using. Beautiful blood sample. You keep going. So our technicians are extremely skilled in getting us the blood samples that we need. They actually do it more frequently than veterinarians. So after we get that blood sample, we put it into an anticoagulant tube and then it will tell us and show us any signs of infection. We'll look at if there's any signs of anemia. We also get a good indicator of kidney, liver, health. Martha Mott says, way to go, Allison. <laughs> Whenever our veterinarians are unable to get a blood sample, Allison and Cheyenne are always able to, to get what we need for us. So we're about half an hour into our procedure, and that means that Bubba's had sedation on board for about the last 45 minutes. He should stay asleep for about another hour, but when we're done, we will give him another injection of some reversal agents that will help him wake up a little bit faster. from the 
to his head and from side to side. So this is actually going to take multiple views because of how big he is. And then we're going to come from the side and take a lateral and multiple views. And then we do another one that comes straight from the front of the head going back. Uh, and because of this uh, history of arthritis in his left front leg, uh, we're going to be doing x-rays of that one as well. Yeah, those x-rays let us get a good look at all of his bones and his joints, his lungs, and some of the internal organs to just make sure that there's no masses or abnormalities there. And again, so I was a big boy, about 100 pounds, so it takes, uh, takes a few people to move him. We're moving him into our radiology suite where we were taking x-rays. We've actually set him up to do it on the ground since he's so big and difficult to move. Right now they're just kind of moving him around, getting him set up so that they get the exact shots they want. It's really important to have kind of consistency from, from year to year in, in shots and the techniques that we use so that we're easily able to compare for any differences. Yes, I agree. If we do more of these, we will try to get a Wi-Fi booster so we can give you guys a better signal and not have so many uh, breakups in our live stream. Getting a question if the tortoise's shell is made up of bone. Can you guys tell us? Um, isn't it made up of mostly keratin, but it is attached to their skeletal system, so their spine is attached to the to the carapace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's super hard, it's like bone. They can actually feel um, on that shell when you're scratching it. So kind of like what you feel on your fingernail when if you were to rub or scratch that, that's what a tortoise can feel if you're, if you're touching their shell. So we got our first x-ray done. Dr. Ferris is just checking to make sure that it's the view she likes. We'll take a closer look at all those later to see if we find any abnormalities and just monitor no, that progression of arthritis. So we should that's perfect. You should get kind of both of them symmetrically now. Yeah. Okay. Since x-rays do give off some radiation, we're always moving all of our staff out of the room before we take them. And if we have to stay in, we do have lead vests and gloves to protect ourselves. some of the settings on her x-ray to get a good look at that, that left elbow. And Rachel, when you're ready. Okay. Tell me when you're ready.
Is the final part of our exam today. Once we finish this, we'll give Bubba his reversal agent and then we come up, which will take a few hours. Or is this a pretty small metabolism? And don't wake up quite as quickly as some of our other cases. Sorry, I just stepped out to get this pillow. While the team finishes up some x rays and while they move on to the next shot, we'll just take a look at our hospital treatment room here. You can see this is where we do most of our exams. We have a nice big table where we can fit everything up to about the size of a lion or a tiger. We do have viewing windows, so when the zoo does open back up, people can watch us and see what we're doing uh, through the windows here. We also have some video from outside the building. In addition to our treatment room, we have a surgical area where we can do sterile surgeries. bring a lot of our animals back here to the hospital just because it's where we have all of our equipment but for some of our animals they're so big we have to take the hospital to them. Yeah tortoises do have feeling in their shell we often equivalent think it's about equivalent to the feeling we have in our fingernails. Just joined us. We're doing an annual exam on Bubba, our 20 or 21 year old Solfada or African Spurred Tortoise. These guys are the third largest species of tortoise in the world behind Aldabra and Galapagos tortoises. Yeah, we'll work to show you some radiographs on the monitors once the team finishes up in there. Uh, just trying to let them get all the shots they need and then we'll go take a look and see what Dr. Ferris found. Tortoises ticklish in any spots. I don't know if we can say ticklish, but we do know that some of them like being scratched in certain areas. There are some species that will really extend their neck if you if you rub on the underside of their necks or scratch their heads. Others are, are really timid and will pull up inside their shells anytime they're touched by anything. So it's a really a variable thing, probably individually and species-wise. So we've already completed our physical exam uh, where we took a look at Bubba from the tip of his nose to the end of his tail, looking for any abnormalities. We also got a blood sample, monitored his heart rate and respiratory rate. And that's something we do for just about all the animals here at the Sacramento Zoo. So the team's finished up their first set of shots for Bubba. The uh, next thing they're gonna do is do what we call these lateral images where we shoot across. And so Taking images from different positions allows us to assess a variety of different organs in the tortoise.
we're looking at there, the top part, and you can see some darkness. That's his lungs, so everything below. This is some of the internal organs. So we always like to make sure that they're all really clear. That's why we do some of these uh, lateral images. Some of the x-rays on, on our species, again, the shots we want requires a little bit of creativity. So right now, they're looking to find a way to just get a nice clear image where they can just see every part of that elbow without the shell or, or other body parts getting in the way. so we can get the exact x-ray that we want. Bubba's favorite food? And that's a question I'll have to check with the keepers on. I don't know myself. A lot of tortoises love most fruits as treats, but we don't want them to get too many. It's like candy for them. So a lot of them love bananas and strawberries, uh, some of our, our sugary fruits. But I'll have to check with our, our keeper team that, that works with him daily and, and manages his diet to know what his exact favorite food is. Tortoises do tend to get along with other animals. Um, you know, they occasionally will get aggressive and want to, to ram things or are curious and, and bite things. And the big guys have a really strong bite. But overall, they are animals that, that are not super aggressive. And, and they are able to tuck into their shells and something. Just working out how to to get the shot of the elbow. Bubba does have a history of some left elbow arthritis that we like to monitor at all of his annual exams. And so finding a way to get a nice clear shot of that elbow uh, can be really challenging. Tortoise arms and legs are, are kind of a unique shape, and the shell tends to tends to get in the way of a lot of the images that we're trying to get. Anyone that wasn't here at the start, today's exam is being performed by Dr. Rachel Ferris. She is a zoological medicine resident at UC Davis. And that's a three-year program that will allow her to become a specialist in zoological medicine. She spends her first year at UC Davis and at the Sacramento Zoo. And then years two and three down in San Diego at the San Diego Zoo, SeaWorld, and the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. The zoo also has a partnership to allow fourth year students interested in zoological medicine to spend time at the zoo and gain hands-on experience with all of the species that we have here. And also assisting Dr. Farish today are two of the zoo's veterinary technicians.
Bubba is about a 20 or 21 year old tortoise. He lives, he's lived most of his life here at the Sacramento Zoo. And that's pretty young for a, a spurt die tortoise. Still working on getting just the right images. I can't take you into the room as we don't want to all get exposed to, to the radiation that occurs when we're taking x-rays. But we will try to show you a few of those images as soon as the team says they're done in there. Yes, they can definitely live over 100 years old, and I do not know the record. Uh, I'll have to ask our audience. Just working on getting the kind of top of Bubba, and his, we really like to get a good look at that area because that's where the lungs of a tortoise live. And being able to check the lungs, let's just, just make sure that there's no signs of any respiratory infections. So we have to use a variety of tools to get our patients exactly where they want them. We have a number of different sandbags, tubes, and blocks to help get all of our animals position just how we need them for x-rays. So shadow that will lift, you pull each other. And for those that didn't see earlier, we did weigh Bubba at the start of his exam. We actually place him onto a container instead of putting him right on the scale. And that's just so that his legs are elevated and we get his full body weight. If we try to put him directly on a small scale like that, uh, we aren't able to keep his legs from contacting the ground and we get an inaccurate weight. And today, Bubba weighed right about 100 pounds. Yep. All right, sounds like the team is pretty happy with the shot they got there. Can you repeat that for us, Cheyenne? Sure. I was just telling our anesthesiologist that student that mother's doing well, still breathing, heart's still pumping, so we're doing well. Yeah, even when they're in here, we like to um, continue to monitor their heart rate and their heart rate. All the animals that get sedation or anesthesia, it's really important to just make sure that all their systems are still working. So, yeah, we can check and show you how many toes our tortoises have when we're allowed back in. We can get a good close up. Not clear. Not clear. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm trying to 
Diane, can you show us how many toes a tortoise has? Sure. So this is the tortoise's left front leg. We have one, two, three, four, five, how about on the back leg? Okay. On our back leg, we have one, two, three, and four. Thank you. Are we all done with the x-rays? We are all done. So now we're going to bring Bubba out here to our metal tub, and we're going to give him a bit of a spa day. So we're going to trim up some um, overgrowth in, in the back part of his shell and then also do a deep trim. Excellent. Yeah, or, can you click through, Cheyenne, a few of the x-rays so, so the folks out there can see what you guys Absolutely. Once we move him on the yep. table. Sorry I'm about that. <laughs> One, two, three. So for those that missed it earlier, I have a little bit of an abnormality in his shell that requires some care from the team on every now and then during his annual exam. And we just tend to trim up some of his shell so that um, you know, fecal material gets caught and that he's able to pass everything and keep his skin nice and healthy. Okay, so this is our radiologist Bubba. He's gonna come out here and he's gonna do a Students from UC Davis is using a Dremel to trim up some of Bubba's. This kind of a spa day treatment to make sure that there's no overgrowth. You can see the team's just using that Doppler again to keep an eye on his heart rate. One of the best methods we can use to, to assess depth of anesthesia. There you go. All right, so the Doppler we're using is shooting up above us. You can take a listen to the floor. The whooshing sound you hear is, is above its heart beating. So you can't truly really hear like a murmur on a Doppler flow. But you can listen for the rhythm, make sure that the rhythm is nice and normal. And you can see if there's like a lot of turbulence that might mm -hmm. you know, make you more concerned. But so those are the things we're all listening for. What did you get, Robin? 24. Excellent. And how's that compared to earlier? Not the same. All right. Very expected typical sedated large tortoise heart rate. Right? So much more concerning if this was a small mammal. Mm -hmm.
Federation's great hands-on experience while they're here. These guys are one year away from becoming veterinarians and out on their own. It's some of the, the only experience they get with some of the unique species we have here in the Sacramento Zoo. Yeah. confirmation of the cell that requires uh, routine, routine care by the veterinary team. And it just helps keep the, help, the shell healthy and its skin healthy. of his life, but it won't get too much bigger. Bubba should not feel any discomfort from anything we did today. Uh, all, none of these things are particularly painful. The trampoline we're doing now is really similar to if you've ever had uh, like your nails done or filed down. It's really kind of a, a similar feeling to that. And it took about two people to lift him onto the table. Our technicians, Alice and Cheyenne, are exceptionally strong, so they didn't need any extra help today. And you can see we're just trying to find an outlet to get another Dremel going so we can, can work on him uh, simultaneously and just complete his exam rather quickly. Whenever we have animals under sedation or anesthesia, we like to get things done as quick as possible just so that there's not any extra or unnecessary um, sedation or stress on them. So while our vet student works on, on some of the kind end gentlemen, we can see Dr. Ferris is working on the nail. And this is just part of routine care and work. Typical smell. Uh, it's 
I think it smells a lot like you work in a nail salon. Okay, I haven't uh, frequented as many nail salons as Allison, so we'll have to rely on her reporting there. That's about the food there? Nail polish removal. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, the Trammell Company does not make any special bits for us that I know. We're usually just uh, working with what they have and finding the best tools for, for our jobs. And we're using pretty typical little bits uh, that help file things down. on his feet to smooth that out. That continuously grows and they wear it down when they eat, but it doesn't always wear totally symmetrically. So sometimes we help them along just to, to keep them comfortable. Trembling, um, I'm just kind of check in and make sure it's not getting too hot. All that friction. Um, looks like Bubba's starting to wake up a little bit. He might be saying he's done with today's exam. He's done. So once he starts to wake up, he just gets too strong and powerful to, for us to continue working on him. Uh, can't really do much when he tries to pull into his shell. It, as strong as our, our team is, he's much stronger. <laughs> So the last thing we're going to do here today is give him an injection of a reversal agent for, for the sedatives that he got this morning. And I'll just help make sure that he wakes up completely and he wakes up a little bit faster than if we didn't get that. But sometimes as we're working on him, all that stimulation can make them seem like they're awake and as soon as we leave them alone, they, they'll go back to sleep. So you can just go right into the muscle belly to feel a nice muscle belly right there. Okay. So you can go ahead and go right into there and then just pull back like normal to so make sure and go ahead and feel all that. Yeah, that's should probably be reactive. Okay. So like this won't be a surprise yeah. if he does react to this a little bit. Having an injection is always a bit of shock, of a shock even if you are semi right. Do you feel like you got uh, air back at all or was that just from the plunger? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. I feel like I'm getting a lot of negative pressure. And since tortoises can take so long to wake up, we are going to think about ending our stream pretty soon. So Bubba will be kept in this quiet, dark room so he can peacefully wake up. And we're using some towels to just prop his head up so he wakes up comfortable without any sort of neck pain. And since he did kind of show signs of going back to sleep a little bit, uh, Dr. Parrish is going to try to just do a little bit of final dremeling on, on his beak there. And we'll either have a successful dremeling or he'll be stimulated to wake up.
do that slowly and on his own time over the, over the next few hours. Hopefully by the end of the day he can go back to his exhibit. Sometimes they like to sleep uh, overnight here at the hospital before they go home. Dr. Ferris, anything major on Bubba's physical exam today? So Bubba looks good today, which is great news for him. He had one little portion of the show with a crack in it, but I think he might have injured just trying to walk around and escape. He's got a pretty thick shell, so small crack like that won't have any problems for him, but it's something we'll make a note of so that we know that it happened. Uh, but otherwise, he looked good, so we'll continue to do his annual exams. We'll look at his blood work and make sure that there's no signs of any, um, you know, problems with his organ function on there. Because it can be really challenging in these guys with these big, thick shells to get an evaluation of their inside without looking at blood work. So we'll do all that today uh, while he's waking up. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at the Murray Fowler Veterinary Hospital at the Sacramento Zoo. Bubba should wake up over the next couple hours. We'll be back with you again for another exam one day soon, we hope.